Elliot's um, kind of transformation into kind of this this Catholic like MAGA dude is really quite. Uh, I find it fascinating. What really makes a man um, effeminate? Testosterone is what allows you to embrace challenge actively. When it comes to big goals, you know, like trying to move, like like create something larger than yourself, trying to go out into the world and uh, make your place in it. That's something that doesn't just come find you. All righty, guys. <clears throat> Next up, we've got a, you know, we've got a little definition of an effeminate man from Elliot Hulse here. Now, I don't know about you, Merck, but when I think about an effeminate man, I think of a man who's maybe a little soft-spoken. Maybe his biceps are the same diameter as his wrist, you know. But Elliot here's got a, a much better definition. I think he actually ripped it from Thomas Aquinas. Let's check it out. What makes a man effeminate? According to Thomas Aquinas, it's a man's inability to put aside pleasure to pursue that which is arduous. Men are built rugged so that we can handle suffering in pursuit of that which is great. Are you pursuing greatness or settling for sinful pleasure? What makes... Interesting. Yeah, uh, Elliot's um, kind of transformation into kind of this this Catholic like MAGA dude is really quite. Uh, I find it fascinating because, well, I mean, because I'm Catholic, and so like I see him like moving that way, and it's like he was into this all wild, far out like spirituality stuff before, um, and now he's like coming to like a much more kind of traditional sort of uh, approach on things is is truly uh, a fun thing to watch. And uh, some of his stuff, I think, is a little over top. But this is an interesting point to look at. You know, like, what really makes a man um, effeminate, right? And it, he's saying this, you got to be, be pursuing greatness, right? You, you got to, if you're shirking off discomfort, then that's really what effeminacy is. It's not about the size of your muscles or anything like that. And, you know, I would agree with that. Like, a lot of the traditional, tradi traditional masculine characteristics, they are... They're great, you know, like you know, strength, ruggedness, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I don't think you can completely distill all of that and say that is the entirety of what masculinity is. Because it, if it's just a physical thing, well, then you know, it's someone who who is genetically, you know, just not gifted in the physical department. Uh, then they can't be a masculine man, and I just don't buy that because you see plenty of guys who seem very, you know masculine who are who are men that I strongly admire um, but they don't have a impressive physique they don't you know strike the most alpha poses and and stuff like that they don't they probably don't have the the strongest game uh, whatever you want to call it like the, there's something more that to the to masculinity and I think what Elliot was getting at and if I could like expand upon it is this pursuit of um, Active sacrifice is maybe the way to say it. It's like there's going to be pain in life no matter what, okay? And I think the effeminate way to go through life would be to embrace passive pain, okay? And to, and to, be, to have the, the, the bulk of your biggest pains just be things that you just – you just bear. So like for a man that would mean like, oh, I just have a shitty job and I just got to bear it. Um, you know, oh, I just need to deal with my lousy uh, relationships or, oh, I just, I don't have good genetics. So there's nothing I can do about it. And it's just like this attitude of victimhood. And where you want to be is you want to be being like, okay, if I'm going to suffer in this life, regardless, because you are bottom line, it's like, I'm going to suffer in a way that actually serves me. I'm going to go out and pursue voluntary sacrifice. And when you go at it that way, this is where I think we really start getting into the heart of masculinity because this is where like the essence of masculinity, like our testosterone really starts coming into play where testosterone is what allows you to embrace challenge actively, right? I would argue that women are actually better at dealing with passive pain. You like think about, you know, the one of the prime, you know, overtly feminine activities of childbirth. That's extreme pain, but it's passive. It's like they don't need to 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 like seek it out. It's like it will like if they get pregnant, it's just going to happen to them. Right. You know, assuming they, they don't abort it or whatever. But like it's going to it's something that will come upon them and then they just have to endure it. 
And I would say women in many ways, they're, they're better at dealing with passive pain. They're kind of wired for it. And a lot of child rearing, a lot of that kind of stuff is passive pain. It's like, all right, you got this kid. It's like they're, they're there. They're going to be hard to deal with and like that sort of thing. But when it comes to big goals, you know, like trying to move, like, like create something larger than yourself, trying to go out into the world and uh, make your place in it, that's something that doesn't just come find you. That's something you have to go actively seek out. It's like you're stepping into the fire rather than the fire coming to you. And I think that's what testosterone is really about is it it can get you hooked on that process of going out. Similar to how oxytocin, the more you know, female uh, uh, or estrogen, which affects oxytocin, the more female based hormone that helps women deal with the passive pain because they can connect with the love with their child a little more. They can connect with the, 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 the feelings of those people around them and help bear their suffering in a more passive way. They're, they're just equipped for it. And it's not saying that men can't deal with passive pain and women can't be go out and you know, active go-getters. No, I'm just saying if we're going to just boil it down to the essence of like what our biology is just most adapted to for a man, it's going out, engaging in active sacrifice to make something, to achieve greatness as Elliot was saying. And so, yeah, I think, I think he's, he's on with it there. Or Aquinas is on, is, is on point with it there. And, uh, it's just something that you want to think about with yourself. It's like, what sort of active sacrifice are you engaged in? Is it something that you really, do you feel, feel like you're building something that you're excited about? If you're not, why not get to it? 